I think Ava is a very open character. Compared to the other characters in the script, she's very open and she's very susceptible. And she's kind of... In this scene, there's a, a scene where she, where she touches Zoe after, after she's died and we've brought her back to life. And Ava almost... She's almost like a conductor or an empath for, for the thoughts or the changes that have gone on in Zoe's head. So my character goes into this dream-like sequence or, or, the, or the visions that Zoe's having in her head at that time. And she's dealing with the with the power of Zoe's past, which comes in the form of a younger of a younger Zoe, um, Zoe played by Olivia, the wonderful Olivia Wilde. And so this so this dream sequence is all about the fears, the the deep underlying fears of 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 humans. And I think when Ava's pulled into this, she's she's so confused and so terrified because it's not real, but it feels so real. And she's burnt and she has scars. And I, she believes, my character believes, and she, she knows something is wrong. So everything that happens to her, she believes wholeheartedly and all the, and all the while probably not being believed by her co-workers. Ava and Clay and Nico, we all experience Zoe's change in her demeanor, in her, in her attitude. It's like a vacancy, it's a, and it's a... I think what the audience is going to gradually see is the Zoe that we knew and loved as a character disintegrating before our eyes are being taken over as such. And these dreams, these nightmares in her head are coming forth. These, are, these projections are emerging from her, from her subconscious. And I think that's part of the process of maybe bringing someone back. We have we left over, open a portal for, for other things, for other parts of you perhaps that didn't exist or were never allowed to exist to come through. And watching her watching her is is so unnerving because she doesn't seem human anymore she doesn't seem like the girl that we knew yet she's pretending like she's fine which is all the while more worrying for me personally when i read this script i couldn't relate it to other films because it sort of with being this intellectual thriller with this wonderful horror, um, horror element it sort of sparked something new for me in terms of filmmaking and I mean there's wonderful movies and I'm a, I'm a Alfred Hitchcock fan all the way and the idea of seeing less is more frightening than ever seeing um, than ever seeing everything planted on screen for you and I think David's doing that a little bit it's a little it's a little um, it's not smoke and mirrors by any stretch of the imagination but it's it's in your mind it's scarier than than what you're seeing in front of you and I think that's what we're trying to play with a little bit this movie probably is more terrifying because it's so relatable and just through science and especially when this film comes out with the, with the majority that they're doing in, in this field, the possibility is slightly more probable than, than it ever was before. The idea that this, of this happening and the realism of, of this woman changing and there's no deformities. Um, Immediately, there's the, she looks perfectly normal, but the change in her mind is terrifying and frightening and strong. That I think that will scare audiences. I think that will that scares me.